How to Handle Loss and Grief. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you've lost a loved one. Maybe they left you. Maybe they died. And you're looking for a way to deal with the emotional pain, the sadness, the loneliness, maybe even the guilt. So let's start out by being very clear on one thing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with feeling the way you feel. It is entirely natural and normal to feel upset and sad if somebody you love has passed away or left. You see, you've uh, built up a familiarity, a closeness with that person. Maybe nobody knew you better than that person. And maybe you knew them best. And that kind of closeness is what causes the sense of loss and the sense of grief. So it is okay to feel that way. There's nothing wrong with you. It's not therapy worthy. You don't need therapy just because you feel loss and grief. Okay? Total acceptance of your loss is the basis of what comes next of your emotional healing and I'll do my best even though I'm not with you right now not sitting with you I'll do my best to guide you through it based on my experience my 28 years experience as a coach If it's hard for you to comprehend that it's entirely natural to feel that way, um, imagine what a world would be like where nobody felt loss, nobody felt sadness, people die and nobody cared. Would that not be a world of psychopaths, sociopaths, crazy people? So once you gain total acceptance of how you feel and of your loss, and by how you feel, I mean what's going on in your body. Okay, You want to become aware of that, what's going on in your chest and your stomach and your throat. As you gain an acceptance of that, what you'll notice, what's actually happening, is... There's this sense of sadness that comes with nostalgic and romantic memories. And the sense of sadness is an energy that arises in waves. It comes and goes in waves. Okay, so you might be feeling all right for a couple of hours and it'll seem as if everything is okay until the next wave of uh, loneliness or sadness or grief comes along and that might be triggered by anything it could be triggered by a statement it could be triggered by an object it could be triggered by a person it could be triggered by a memory and once it's triggered again that's when the next wave comes and suppressing it judging it denying it trying to ignore it is not going to work as you've probably noticed yourself. Okay, If you suppress it, that's only going to drain you and deplete your energy. Sure, you might think that the sadness already drains you, but trust me, suppressing it, trying to ignore it, trying to get rid of it as fast as possible is going to deplete your energy even more. Hey buddy, you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. It's all good. What's wrong? Sorry about your mother, man. Thank you. Honey, it's okay to be sad. 
It's okay if you want to cry about your mother. There's no shame in that. I'm okay. I'm fine. Do you want the kids to think their father is weak? I am okay. Get off my back. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, hey. Listen, me and the boys are going to go out tonight. You want to join us? No, man, I'm swamped tonight. I'm busy. No? Yeah, all right. Catch up with you later. Yeah, all right. Thanks for calling. Yeah. Bye-bye. So you drive, so you're feeling okay, and you drive by a place where the two of you spent time together, and suddenly that emotion is triggered again. And you might feel sorry for what you failed to do or say, and that'll trigger the next wave, or you might feel you uh, abandoned them or failed to support them in the way they needed, and that'll trigger a guilt wave mixed in with the sadness waves. So there's many ideas and triggers that could come along, but in total acceptance, you just allow those waves to pass and you observe, okay? It's important now in this phase of your life to observe, to see what's really going on within. It's usually a thought, could be an external thing, but it's usually a memory, and that memory triggers the emotion. That's the mechanics of it. I don't know the extent of your pain. This uh, video is for people with a little bit of grief and those with a lot. I don't know the extent of it, but that's pretty much what happens. Now, it's natural for this to go on for a couple of weeks. It's not good or bad, it's just energy processing, energy passing through. You just let it pass through, it's not good or bad. It's just that which happens naturally when two people who are very familiar get separated. It takes some time getting used to, it takes some time to once again feel yourself independent of the other. It's as if you became one eventually. The more time you spent together, the more you became one. And it's as if a part of you has been torn away, leaving this uh, open wound. And it's natural for it to just take a while to heal again. It's no big deal, okay? We all go through it at some point in life. It's almost as if that's part of the package of living on planet Earth. Part of the package is dealing with uh, both closeness and intimacy and the opposite polarity, which is separation and loss. And I doubt there's a single human being alive that has not, in some shape or form, gone through it. It's usually the most intense in the first few weeks. And in the following months, it gradually recedes on its own, regardless of what you try or don't try, regardless of the drugs you take against it or don't take, regardless of the counseling you take or don't take, it usually recedes over time on its own. In fact, trying to quicken that process is a form of suppression, which can actually prolong it, in my experience. Now, if it doesn't recede over time, if it doesn't get smaller 
from month to month, then we're not looking at natural releasing the way it happens with every human being. We're looking at ego-generated, self-inflicted suffering. And that's the suffering we can address in this video. Not the natural process of grieving and loss, which takes a few weeks, but anything that goes beyond a few months, uh, there's something wrong in the ego. The purpose of this presentation is to stop that or shorten the period of suffering beyond the normal suffering. It's safe to say that if suffering goes for more than four months, you have other issues going on than just the loss. In that case, it's about you, not the person you lost. So, if you've just lost somebody a couple of days ago, or even a couple of weeks ago, turn this video off now. It is not for you. Okay? Just accept your loss and accept the waves of emotion that come and go until it recedes by itself naturally. If, however, you've been in this for many, many months, continue watching this video. And I'll explain to you why you're still stuck in that grief and how you can let go of that. Reason number one that you might be stuck in a sense of loss is because you believe the person is not in a better place. It's one of the main reasons people get stuck in the sense of loss over months, sometimes even years. You believe the person is not in a better place as if their destiny dependent, depended on you personally. You can see how that's an ego thing. You think their destiny and how they are depends on you. Reason number two, you might be stuck in a sense of loss, is because you've lost yourself. You no longer feel yourself. That is, you're no longer able to breathe, eat, speak, and act independently of the other. Okay? It means you yourself no longer find purpose with yourself. Um, you cannot live independently, or so you believe. And reason number three, you might be stuck in a sense of loss, is because you have not yet forgiven the other, or yourself for some kind of misdeed. So there's still something unsaid, unspoken, or unforgiven in either of you. Okay? If you really think you've been hurt badly by that person and they left you for another, for example, you might continue uh, thinking in terms of revenge or anger or um, unfulfilled desire for months and years to come. Those are the three main reasons. Do any of these apply to you? If so, I'll tell you exactly what to do with them one by one. So let's start with reason number one. If you don't believe the person is in a better place, that's not only purely an ego thing, as if you were God and determined the person's fate, it's also actually sending negative thoughts in the person's direction. You see, you're assuming they're in a bad place, and every time you assume that, you send that in their direction. In this case, you need to practice seeing the other person not as a soul that is lost forever without hope, but as being in a good place. If it's someone who died, you need to think of them as being in heaven or being in paradise or being at a place where they're well taken care of. If they died, you have absolutely no evidence whatsoever that they're in a worse place. 
So try this right now while watching, if that is your issue. Uh, check how you see them, at what place you see them. Do you see them in some kind of dark realm, all lost and lonely and hopeless? And if so, try to shift that right now and see them in a state of higher consciousness, surrounded by love and light and celebration and party and fun. Try that right now. Now, if it's a child you've lost, or a child you're no longer able to see or allowed to see due to some divorce issue, check what, what is your image of that child. Do you see them as disadvantaged, poor, victim? And if so, right now, shift that and see them as healthy, happy, and well attended to, well taken care of. And if it's a partner who left you, you need to think of them as being happier, calmer, and healthier without you. You see, that's where the ego comes in. How could they be happier and healthier without me? If you're unwilling to see them as happier and healthier and calmer, it's an ego thing. You don't want to. But you indeed can. It is indeed possible that they live a good life without you. You see, the world has been turning for thousands of years without you. Can you imagine or grasp that maybe people don't need you quite as much as you thought? That they'll survive without you, that the world is going to keep turning without you? At the same time you see them this way, you start feeling better too. Not only do you direct supportive, loving thoughts in their direction. You see, pity is not love. We think having pity with people is love. No, pity is ego. So when you send positive, loving thoughts in their direction, you feel better too. It reflects back upon you. So it can take some time to recondition yourself in this way. Every time the sadness or grief arise, hold on a minute and examine what exactly you're thinking about that person. Which thoughts create this low energy? Just examine. If you find a thought about the person being in a worse place, acknowledge the fact and the fact that that's what you're thinking, and then deliberately think of the person as being in a better place. And if you like, add the words, I love you, or may you find peace every time you think of them. Every single time the idea of that person comes into mind, simply say, I love you. I love you, not I miss you, or I'm nothing without you, or everything's lost without you, but just I love you, may you find peace. Or simply, may you find peace, if I love you triggers you. May you find peace. May we both find peace. May we both find peace. That was one of my methods when I lost somebody close to me. Every time I thought of them and wanted to go back into grief or guilt or sadness, I just said, May we find peace. May you be well. May you find peace. It's a reconditioning process that can take several weeks. You repeat this over and over until it becomes habitual to think of the person in this way. In a way that relieves both the giver and the receiver.
Mom, I need you. Could you please come back? I can't do everything on my own. I can't take care of my youngest brother on my own. He doesn't listen to me. I can't forget him. I can't live without him. I know you love Dad, but he's in a better place now. Don't say that! Don't you love your father? What's wrong with you? Hello? Yes, I'm his mother. My son's been missing classes. Thank you for telling me. Okay. If you were here, that wouldn't happen. Trudy. When are you going to let go? Your kids need you. I can't. I just can't. He was my whole life. Do you want me to forget my whole life? If you love him, you'll pray for him. And not just sit and cry. You'll send him loving thoughts. I can't do this by myself. I can't take care of this family by myself. I need him. Yes, you can. You're very strong and you'll take care of him. I can't. I hate him. How can he leave us without support or help? I hate him. It's okay. You need to forgive him and let go. Number two. Do you feel that your life no longer has a purpose without them, that you are nothing without them? That too is an ego thought that helps neither you nor them. If you believe you can experience joy without another person, that is not only lack of self-love, it's actually self-hatred. Think about that for a moment. That is actually self-hatred. In this case, you need to start thinking about your capacity to experience joy, fun, calm, confidence and happiness autonomously, independently, just with yourself, by yourself, for yourself. Send yourself some love and appreciation. Shower yourself with it. Try that now, actually. Close your eyes and give yourself some respect. Just to give your body and your being some attention some approval, as if you're mentally clapping yourself on the shoulders. And send yourself some more love. Send yourself some more love right now. Shower your whole body and being with light. You can visualize f overflowing yourself with light Shower your whole body and being with time, attention, space, awareness, respect. That's what you could use more of. You could use hours and hours of this exercise we're doing right now. I'm quite serious. You could sit there for hours just showering yourself with attention. Because if you believe you're nothing without somebody else, You've completely lost yourself. You're far away from reality. You 
need to get back to reality, to feeling yourself, to feeling your body, to feeling your breathing, to taking your time for yourself, to making small gifts for yourself, even cooking for yourself, treating yourself to nice activities. pursuing a hobby, improving yourself on your job, learning to live again. The idea that you can't live with another person is an illusion. It was a beautiful illusion while it lasted, but nothing is forever. Only infinity is forever. Everything and everyone that is not infinity comes and goes. And that's reality. That is a fact of life. Not to mention that within infinity, nothing is ever really lost. That's why prolonged grief is illusory, because nothing is ever lost in the first place. Do you feel there was something unfinished, unforgiven, unspoken or unexplained between you and the person you lost? That could be a cause of you not letting go. In this case, write out or speak out everything you still want to say to the person. Even if there's nobody else in the room, say everything you think you failed to say. Say it now. Stop this video and just say it all. Speak or write until you have nothing more to say, until it's all out of your system. You may think that the other does not hear you, but consciousness as well as thoughts do not adhere to the laws of space and time. Thoughts travel across space and time. It's an illusion to think the other does not know or does not hear you. It's one of the illusions that cause sadness, the illusion of separation. Speak with the intention of forgiveness of self and the other. Speak until all unsaid things are said. And then you naturally let go because your attention is no longer stuck. It's no longer preoccupied. It's like a, a confessional. In this case, the confessional is toward the other as if the other were around you. You can save a lot of money with a therapist if you do that because when you go to therapy you essentially do the same thing you take what's within you and just express it and confess to it these are the three most common prolongers of grief and loss you may have others but you can apply these simple principles on them too in essence all of life is about regaining control of your thought process and the direction of your attention as well as how you define yourself. Within infinity there really is no such thing as loss, I repeat, there is no such thing as loss. Nothing is lost, nobody is lost, everything is infinite, everything is eternal, everything is forever. You can tune in to the quality or energy you had at the time the person was still around physically, and you'll reactivate or reattract either that person or someone or something similar. It's actually the loss and grief that separates you, that disconnects you from their energy or from the quality you had at that time. And if they're dead, uh, you will reunite after you leave your own body. You can reunite if that is what you want. And 
it can be a happy reunion. That's not just something I'm saying off the top of my head. That's something I have actually experienced myself while out of body, during so-called out-of-body experiences. To me, that's a fact. That's, to me, just as natural as driving a car, just as natural as getting dressed, just as natural as brushing my teeth. It's nothing mysterious or mystical or esoteric. It's just a simple fact of life, that nothing is lost, nobody is ever lost. Because nobody and nothing is ever lost within infinity, excessive sadness or grieving beyond several weeks are illusory ego preoccupations. My name is Fred Dotson. May these processes help you shorten your period of suffering. If you require more help, do not hesitate to contact me for coaching, and I'll coach you through it. Have a nice week.